Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is John Bunn and I have a treat for you today. One of my good buddies, Stanton Giles, joins us today uh, with a real talk. We just sit down and we didn't even put any notes together. We just wanted to have an honest conversation about where we are in life, what's important to us in life, and how to be the best versions of ourselves. Uh, honestly, I feel very motivated after this call, and I, uh, I hope you are as well. A lot of great things going on over here in How to Film Weddings world. Um, we're about to re-record our uh, Complete Wedding Videography course here in the next couple of weeks. That's coming out the first week of November. Um, we've got our retreat coming up in January for our mastermind group that we're finalizing. We're putting together the curriculum for next year's mastermind group putting together some in-person workshops. There's just a lot of good stuff going on. Um, and I just want to say thanks for being part of this community. Like we couldn't do it without you. Uh, we're pushing 17,000 people in our Facebook group now. Like what, how is that? I don't know. There's just so many good things going on. And I just wanted to say thanks before we hopped into the episode, episode. And I wanted to mention our good friends, at the howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing link. It's a page on our website. And as we're getting closer to the end of the year, um, thinking about next year, maybe you're getting a little backlogged for this year. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I get about five or 10 emails or direct messages per day asking if I need outsourcing. And it's honestly a little overwhelming. Nick and I wanted to help remedy that with people and give you a list of curated vendors, curated people that can outsource your wedding films um, from people like Wedding Post House that just cull your footage all the way through to people like Weditor who edit my films. Um, but if you're planning on outsourcing your films and need help, don't try to do everything on your own. Like you could use the help from howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing. Don't reach out when it's too late. Don't reach out whenever you're already backlogged. Um, give one of those uh, vendors a, a look, a try. Reach out to them. We've got several on that list at howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing that will help you to really hone in on your business. So anywho, I've said a lot of things. Hopefully you enjoy Stanton Giles. <coughs> Let's get some of that phlegm out of there before we get going. Mm, I think <sighs> that's how we start this episode. Flims by Stanton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Punny. Uh, John, John Pun and Flims by Stanton. Flims by today. Stanton. I like uh, that. Stanton has a little <clears throat> bit of phlegm, if you can't tell. Uh, he has some congestion, and he still decided to be here today, so thanks. Uh, Stanton, one of my best good buddies. Uh, What's up, It's to good you? to see you. I haven't seen you or talked <clears throat> to you in a few weeks. Since your Rome retreat, which was awesome, we talked about it a lot on the podcast. It seemed to be well. Let's uh, let's start uh, there. Let's start with uh, people know who you are. Check him out on like the fifteen episodes he's been on. But uh, <laughs> talk to me about uh, just what, what's been going on in life in the last few months uh, with the retreat. Why'd you do it? Um, what did it mean to you? Any feedback from how did you like it? Did you like doing it? How was it? <clears throat> yeah. Well. Uh, I like that kind of where we're starting there because that was like the last time that we saw each other really talked, like you just said, you know, I was in Greenland for two weeks or whatever, week and a half after that. And then I just got back from Italy, which I feel like I've been sick for the last three weeks. So apologies for the stuffy voice, everybody that's, that's listening to this, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was cool having you there for the actual retreat. Um, well, I'm just, you know, because just having your presence there and your knowledge for people to be able to hang out with you and just like your goofy fun, you know, filmmakers, filming, filmmakers, filming, film, <laughs> like your like reels you're making, like in the meantime and stuff. And, uh, it was, it was just good having you and Nick there, which sorry, I wish Nick was here to join us, but he's that guy's on his off way to Italy, to Italy himself. right now. Yeah, I know everyone's <laughs> going amazing. to Italy, but me. Yeah. Uh, water and whimsy. They're going to Italy right now too. We're recording or with them later I mean, today. Or they just oh, yeah? there. Salt and Pine was just nice. at Italy. We just released that episode. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, there but me. But it was cool for me to have you guys there because, you know, I like to contrast things and think full circle sometimes because, uh, I mean, I don't know if you guys know that are listening, but John helped mentor me in the very early ages of becoming like a an educator, if you want to call it that. I mean, I still don't really like that word too much, but like 
being somebody that tries to help people learn things in the wedding videography sphere. And my niche is the travel side, the destination weddings and elopements. And John's been there since the beginning. And as each new tick in the stage of that growth of my own path of charging more for weddings or gaining a certain amount of people in the Facebook group that are, you know, interested in being and doing travel weddings and, uh, you know, launching my own course or doing Patreon or, you know, making LUTs that are useful for people or whatever it might be. John's been there as a friend, mostly every, every step of the way. And so, uh, for him to be at my first workshop retreat, whatever you want to call it, I like to call it the Rome retreat just because of the alliteration a little bit, but you know, for all intents and purposes, a workshop, uh, which is kind of one of those moments as well of, of looking back and, uh, and just kind of seeing the journey that, that I've been on. And so for those of you that don't know, and my God, this is not a sales thing by any means, but like Rome is this thing that I've dubbed, uh, my course, my experience. I like to call it more of an experience these days, just because of the fact that like the workshop is actually included with the course. I'm not charging extra for it, which I've always, uh, been really careful about taking people's money or asking for money. And so I've always been trying to think of ways to add more value to it. And I was like, that's what I need to do. I need to have a <clears throat> flims by Stanton. Uh, <laughs> I need to have a retreat that's just for the people that chose to invest in themselves and to invest in me. And as like a thank you from me, but as like a really a, a continuation of the fact that like, Hey, like I really do care about the fact that you, you cared enough to invest into this. Let's do a workshop. And so, man, it was fun. Like I, I, I don't know where our conversation is going to go, but that I, I think I might have mentioned to you on the last night when we were hanging out on that rooftop there on the Denver skyline, I was like, probably top five most fulfilling things that I've ever done mm -hmm. was, was doing that workshop and uh, unanticipated amount of work. Um, you know, even if it is a, a free workshop, <clears throat> coordinating all those people to, to come together and to come into my space and to, you know, have speakers and, you know, coffee and the experience and making sure logistically everything works out, weather, Airbnbs, yada, yada, yada. Um, it was cool to see it come together and for people to, to grow together, to find real community, which was one of the biggest things that a lot of people had as a takeaway, but give them real content, you know, shooting a full faux fake elopement from start to finish. And, um, and, and just seeing like the impact, you know, as the weeks go by of you know, people posting that on their stories and, and, you know, having a photographer there that's taking headshots of them and action shots that, you know, for free so that they can have their branding change as a result of the Rome workshop to be more in line with this travel wedding videographer, adventure videographer, elopement, whatever you want to call it, um, branding that a lot of the people that come to Rome want to take on, you know, they, that adventurous mountain going uh, videographer that's down to travel the world. And so the Rome workshop was very fulfilling for me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what, what's your experience been like with like the, the retreats that you've done for mastermind or, or things like that? Like, uh, is that a pretty parallel feeling yeah. for you? Yeah, I think, um, First of all, uh, the the retreat you put on, it, it was, I'll, I'll get into it more, but uh, I was very impressed um, with, you know, just the whole thing and honored to be part of it and appreciate you mentioning, you know, it's like, it's fun for me to be alongside you uh, just from the early days, you, just when you were making your, you know, your initial transition from Cody to Stanton, that's when I kind of got into your world uh, and yeah. uh you know, from the first time we had you on the podcast, it's like, who is this guy? And like, is he the real deal to, I don't know, three, four years later being like, oh, yeah, like this, I would consider this person one of my good friends. Uh, it was just a no brainer for us to want to be there. And I remember sending you a message just like, hey, <clears throat> what are the odds that we could just come out? Like uh, Nick and I want to get together anyway. Denver's closer to us <clears throat> than actually driving to each other's houses. We can get to Denver quicker. Uh so it's yeah. just an hour and 20 minute <laughs> flight for each of us and, a, you know, a carry on bag and we're there. And uh, so anyway, from my perspective, there was a moment like that in our first mastermind retreat in Scottsdale where there's so much work that goes into putting these events on. And th these mm -hmm. kinds of things aren't necessarily like these massive money making things. Uh, but the main purpose that I just I love helping cultivate community. And I love helping figure out a way to 
give people the opportunity to elevate their business based on just being around community and getting new ideas presented to them, whether or not I agree a hundred percent, I just want to be a facilitator of like, how can we get these good ideas in front of people, people that are doing different things in the market. And that's kind of the thesis of how to film weddings in general. But in Scottsdale, I remember it was one of the, the final nights, I think the next to the final night. And we had this, uh, couch out in the desert for a styled shoot and we've got 60 people around just like all laughing having a good time sun is setting there's models getting their uh, you know video taken or whatever but then people are going off in little groups and taking headshots with cactus and like there's just these beautiful camelback mountain in the background and the sun's mm-hmm. setting and me and nick are just kind of going like crazy all week and then there was just this moment where it's like the clouds literally parted and <laughs> Nick was Nick was standing there. I was standing there. And I was like, let's just sit down on this couch for a second. And like, we just took five minutes sitting on a couch in the middle of the desert, watching the sunset with a mountain, uh, like a Camelback <laughs> mountain, which is like, obviously a great desert. And it was just like, this is why we work so hard. And you can look out and it felt like a dad looking at all the kids or whatever. And it's like, look at all these relationships being at all these all, chickens, all these chickens just running around and, uh, you know, just seeing friendships being built in like that. That's just one of those core memories to me where it's like, oh, this is a top five. This is a top five moment for me, just like you were saying. So um, one of the things I noticed about your retreat, which I've taken and it's like I'm I've processed and just kind of looked at on how how to film weddings can do better um, is just the realness of it. And mm. you just leaning in, not trying to put up a facade, not trying to make it perfect. And the, the quirks about it, I think, so were the best part of it. Just Ooh. like, oh, yeah, that's like Stanton figuring out a retreat in real time in front of us. Uh, he probably yeah. crammed four days <laughs> worth of stuff into two days or three days or whatever it was. And yeah. just like went all out. But like, uh, what was your mindset going into like this, like how did like, because it was pretty obvious to me that it was like, wow, he's there to serve these people. He does not think he's the wedding filmmaker of a year, the year, two years in a row and thinks he's a big deal. He just cares about like real deep connection real fast. And you just went straight there from the beginning. So what was, what was the process of that for you? Or is it just osmosis because you're, that's just who you are. (laughs) Uh, I mean, definitely I mean, me and you have talked a lot this year about, you know, leaning into that, which makes us most fulfilled, you know, and being the most true version of ourselves. Like, you know, when you asked me what I wanted you to talk about whenever you came to the Rome retreat, I was like, man, whatever you're excited about right now, whatever is getting John Bunn excited, because whatever's getting John excited, whatever's getting me excited, Nick, Boomer, whoever's speaking, that's going to be the thing they're going to teach the best about. And through this idea of osmosis, like you were just talking about, people will glean the most from that idea. And so, um, you know, going into it, as I kind of hit on earlier, you know, just, uh, set, or as you hit on earlier, just kind of setting, setting the framework for, for the retreat to being like, Hey, like guys, you already paid for the course. I'm not about to charge you again <coughs> for, for coming to this retreat. Like, here's the deal. I will put on a crammed two days of, of, in person, uh, you know, workshop style stuff for you guys. You guys figure out your flights here, your lodging, your rental car, share with people. If you guys can figure out everything else, I'll do the rest, you know, figure out the travel. And Denver's not the most expensive place to travel to. It's a hub. So it works out really well. And it works out well because of all the mountains right next to it. So um, it was just kind of honest on the front end, like, you know, let's do this. Let's pick a date. What works best for you guys, you know, and just like, being a human with them and just showing like, Hey, I I am trying to invest in you and give you the most value. But yeah, there was like the quirks too. That kind of made it beautiful. Like this office space that me and Boomer and Drew have up here. Uh, You would think maybe five people, 10 people would could comfortably be in here, but we had just over, I think 30 people like between Mm -hmm. like, you know, my fiance being there and all the the people and you guys, like, uh, you know, the people that came, it was like just over 30 people. And, uh, just figuring it out the night before, you know, piecing all these random chairs and the couches and squeezing tables together. Like, okay, we can maybe fit one more person at the end of this table. And ooh, this person gets their own little personalized, personalized like side desk because that's just how it works out or whatever it might be. It was just fun to see like all the faces there 
that next morning, whenever we started. And just even on top of that, like just the the quirky nature of like how you get into the office is like uh-huh. going through a t-shirt printing manufacturing plant. They're mm-hmm. like blasting music. It's kind of like grungy stairs. There's like a, like a, uh, a little break room over there. That's kind of dirty. Smells like trash because I don't take it out too much. But like you get over here and you come to a little YouTube oasis and it's a nice little pretty thing crap crammed with 30 people. But it wasn't about what it looked like. Uh, you know, we had really good, genuine people there from the speakers to the students that came. And, and we also had the beauty of God's creation all around us when we went out to shoot the elopement. Like the mountains did the work for me. You know, Gonala Pass, where we shot... The actual elopement did the work for me. And so I didn't have to focus on those things. And I wanted to focus on the realness of it. And, you know, just thinking back to the things that that kind of were manifest in me and like what's getting me excited as Stanton Giles in my life. I remember I talked to a lot of people about goals, about having audacity. What's your willingness? Do you have a willingness to take a bold risk right now? Uh, and then just leveling the playing field of being like, guys, like, if you, if, if you are scared to come up and talk to any of us, like you got to get rid of that. Like I, I, we are no better than you. Like we got, sure. We got John and Nick here. We got Boomer. We got, you know, Jimmy second society. We got all these people here that maybe you followed for a long time or have looked up to, but like, and that's cool. That's awesome. But don't like idolize it. Don't like make it this mm-hmm. weird separation. Like you guys are just as much worthy, powerful humans as we are. And my, my goal here is to, to motivate you to step into that space to where you not only just maybe right now see us as equals, but like through the process of becoming the best version of yourself, uh, you become someone that is is just like us in, in your journey, that is doing exactly what they want to be doing, uh, which I believe that all of us, the speakers, are are trying to do to the best of our ability. Maybe we're not hitting it nail on the head all the time, but you know uh, that was something that I really wanted to do. I wanted to bring people together to see, you know, just the, the humanity, like, oh, wait, you know what? I have I remember I picked up one guy and uh, he, he said, like, the, the myth, I can't believe you're real or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, I was like, I was like I, it kind of made me cringe a little bit because I was like, I hope by the end of this, you, like, feel good enough to sit there and slap my shoulder and be friends with me and not, like, look at me through this weird lens because I'm just a dude with a dog in Colorado and I have no... <laughs> no reason for you to look up to me that way other than the fact that you might've got the course for me or you're now you're attending my workshop, but like Mm -hmm. just leveling the playing field and motivating people to pursue their goals in an audacious way, uh, and to be motivated by those around them. Uh, and then lastly, just this idea of, of community. Like I knew that it was going to foster community, but the idea of community has become even more important in my mind over the last year, maybe a little bit more as I've moved into this office space to be with Drew and Boomer um, and Boomer Bait of Multiply Media. That's who I'm talking about. I'm sure you guys know who he is, but uh, you know, the progress that I've seen in myself, just the motivation of starting every day, you know, I got my dog, he comes walking in with breakfast this morning. He's got his pup. They're playing. We're saying, what's up? We're talking about our day. Okay, let's take the dogs out at 2 p.m. Let's grind on this wedding film until 2. How long are you here today? I'm here till 6. I'm here till 5. There's this daily banter of uh, having somebody that's going for what they want to be doing in life um, as hard as they can and as passionately as they can right next to you on the other side of a a door right there um, is, is invaluable. Um, and both of my office mates are leaving in the next two months and as irrepre- is irreplaceable as they might be, uh, I still am realizing even today, like talking to some people that, uh, are interested in moving in, it is still worth having people around me to where it's not just, I'm not going to push people away just because they're not boomer and they're not drew, you know, the value of what they'll bring, it'll, it won't be the same. It'll be different but it'll still be way better than just being by myself. And maybe I can encourage those people with what I've gleaned from these two guys as they go off on their next step of their journey, moving out to different cities in the U S. So, um, being able to give that to people, just the idea of like, you know, seeing salt and pine and oak and pine, two different pine named (laughs) wedding videography companies become really good friends, you know, through that and to see people that have followed me for a while, who that, uh, see people that have, uh, 
you know, follow me for a while and, you know, have just been a name on Facebook or Instagram or a business name and see them like, oh, this guy's super cool. Like, I'm really glad I got to meet him. And now, you know, it's not just like a, another person that I'm responding to in the daily tasks. They, I'm like, oh, I'm responding to Ryan. I'm responding to Kevin. Like, how are you doing, man? Like, good to see you. Like, even the community I gain from it, but seeing the community that other people have gained from it in the day-to-day life of just like, okay, like I'm just sitting in front of a computer all day. I don't have anybody in front of me, even connecting digitally with those people. Or even if you're listening to this, like, and you're motivated to go and like get an office space with somebody, like I highly advise going and doing that. Like uh, just going and having somebody just to walk in the office and like, I don't know, just bug them for a second or just like, you know, talk about whatever's going on in life would take super smash brothers breaks these days and like play (laughs) like on the switch and 20 minutes and we're back to it, you know, and then we're working hard and it's just good to have people around you in general. So, yeah, I like all that. No, it's by being there in your grungy yet awesome YouTube oasis (coughs) and seeing it and it's like, Oh, okay. I know kind of what their day-to-day looks like. I see your goal board and you talk about this is where we write our goals and we write audacious audacious goals uh, and just having that banter with people, different things like that. But that community, watching you in it just be like, because technically you have the, like the clout if you want it to be like, yeah, I've, I'm one of the best in the world at this. So I'm a big deal. Like you could do that. And I know a lot of, people that do that and I don't want to be around them. (laughs) And, uh, I, I would much rather be around people that are helping each other grow. And, and honestly too, it's just like, as Stanton, you and I become friends, you know, there's things or times where something's happened and I I stepped in or didn't step in, or I wasn't like, I didn't have your back or I didn't like where, you know, you've challenged me of like, dude, you've got to, you, you have to step up here, like, or whatever it is, whether yeah. it's personal things or how to film weddings things or whatever. But like, um, one thing that I really appreciate about you with our friendship is just like, you are <laughs> who you are and you're kind about it, but you're also like an advocate and mm-hmm. you want to see the people in your world succeed. And it, the, that retreat for me kind of just felt like an extension of that. So people could see that from you and, I like that. And I will take that with me, you know, after I'm done shooting weddings or whatever. And like, it's helped me to grow because you were willing to just be like, Hey man, I really think that, I think you're off here. I think that I don't like, I didn't like this or, but it was brought to me in a way that was like palatable. It's like, Oh, you're right. And then I could talk to you and be like, just so you know, like my family of origin story, this is how I grew up. And this is why I'm like this. And you're like, Oh, I respect that and I hope I can challenge you. And then likewise, same yeah. back back to you. So. Yeah. And I, mean, I think those things have made us like actual real friends, not just like loosey goosey. Oh, I know you, you know me, you were my mentor slash R, you know, and, you know, I've been somebody that's also, you know, educating and doing courses in this industry to like, oh, like we've done some real life together, you know, mm-hmm. um, and you know, the idea of like, you're talking about, you know, I, I like to be firm, but I like to be fair. Like, yeah, I, I, I am, the, the longer I go in this industry, the more I am seeing myself just lean into who I am un- unashamedly. And I think a big reason for that is, is realizing, and <clears throat> for those of you that are listening, don't take this as like me cheapening uh, wedding videography. But just realizing that wedding videography is the idea of being like somebody that's known as a wedding videographer, it is so small. It is so small and to care about, you know, your name in the industry or to care about what this very, very, very small niche of, of an industry is, but much less small niche of, a, of videography. Like the world of videography is so huge compared to wedding videography. And to be honest, like it doesn't matter if you make twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on a wedding, like it does, you're still just a wedding videographer. And if you were to go to somebody that's like a Hollywood, you know, director or DP or something like that, like uh, wedding videography is typically like the stepping stone into other, into other fields of wedding videography. And I think it was the real, or of videography in general, excuse me. Uh, and I think it was just kind of like the more that that's become real to me and the more real that it's become that I want to step more into those things and not just wedding videography. Um, it's just been motivating to be like, 
one, the best version, the way I'm going to be the best version of myself to John Bunn and to other people uh, is to be honest to myself, to be true to who I am uh, and to not hide and to be scared of what people think or what will happen if I say this or if I do this, to just be me on YouTube or Reels or in my course or how I brand myself with everything and accept the repercussions of that. And the repercussions of that have been like nothing. Like it's just been people realizing, oh, like, you know, honestly, it's a lot of people just like looking at like my branding and seeing like how my branding is set up. Uh, the more that that I am becoming just like who who I am in this industry, but you know, uh, I guess my encouragement to like those of you, I'm I, I'm thinking about. I obviously, John, we're just we talked at the beginning. We're ta- we're just having a conversation, but I'm always thinking about the people that are listening too. Obviously, you are too. But I'm like I'm almost feel like I'm talking to them, even though I'm looking at you. But uh, I mean, my encouragement to you guys, and the same thing I said to people in Rome is like, this was another thing I was huge on was just people being their most true version of themselves. Um, and I wish I could find the slide right now where I was talking about, you know, the power of that and how, you know, instead of thinking about what you want, like most people don't actually know what they want, but instead, like, I think what your soul really wants is for you to be honest with yourself and to daily show up and be present with what is going to be the best thing for you and, and, and of you to do. Um, to be the most true version of yourself. And that in there lies fulfillment. Uh, maybe not happiness per se, because I don't think happiness is the goal. I think fulfillment is. Um, and sometimes happiness is a byproduct of the fulfillment, but to pursue happiness um, is, I think, is, is a side goal. I think mm-hmm. to, to pursue fulfillment in this human experience is, is the goal. And so, you know, just, um, I forget I've gotten a little bit off track here, a little bit on a rabbit trail, but I kind of forget exactly what I was responding to uh, with that. But, you know, just like leaning into this idea of, you know, just wedding videography, it's important. And like, obviously I'm still in the industry a lot and that's like 90% of what my headspace is filled with. But, uh, you know, just realizing I'm just a, just a dude too, you know? In this industry, first impressions matter more than ever. So what does your website and brand say about you? Hey guys, it's Austin here from The Creative, and as a wedding videographer myself, I know the power that branding plays in your business growth. Here at The Creative, we are a full-service creative team with over 15 years of experience specializing in creating websites and brands for wedding videographers just like you. From our full custom all-in-one packages to our do-it-yourself templates, we've got options that fit every business at any stage. You've poured your soul into your business. Now it's time to have a brand that causes couples to say yes before they even get to your contact form. To contact us, go to wearethecreative.studio. Yeah, and I I think that that's maybe what's (coughs) really refreshing about you. And if you're out there listening, it's like, wait, wedding videography isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it's a very big deal that we're doing this. But like in the grand scheme of things, I think that zooming out just a little bit further and realizing that if like this is, uh, you know, and maybe this is your thing and that's great. And it should be a lot of your all's thing that are listening, but like, yeah, for sure. Your identity (coughs) is just like, I want to be known to other wedding filmmakers or I want to be known in the industry. And and that's great. But that might, I don't, I don't know if like the thinking of the people, I'm trying to say this in a way where I won't get canceled. Uh, you know, it's like the people that, no. The people that I am most attracted to being around and learning from and uh, are ones that aren't trying to get the fingers or the eyeballs all pointed towards them. And the natural byproduct of being that way, uh, why I feel like How to Film Weddings has been successful is and why Stanton is successful. And, the, you know, I think about it's people that are like, hey, this is I'm just here kind <clears throat> of relaying info to help you because I care about you. I'm pointing it right back at you listening or you watching this or whatever and saying, Hey, I, I'm, I appreciate and I'm humbled by the fact that you're nervous to come talk to me or like need or want a picture with me. I appreciate all that. And that feels good in the moment, but I'm very impact driven. And it's like having somebody reach out or connect with me and just say, Hey, just so you know, because of your teaching style, because you made this so easy, because you weren't braggadocious and you weren't trying to puff yourself up, I am now full time doing this and it's changing my family tree and it's helping me. Like, <laughs> But one of the things with you that I think that uh, is has been really helpful as a friend 
is like what you're saying about your soul and like trying to connect with what your soul really wants. And, uh, for me, like I have lived a life, a lot of my life worried or afraid with fear, which is not a a characteristic that I love being led by fear of repercussions of (coughs) truly being me. And from time to time, that swells out whenever, you know, it's like how to fill muddings is, is one of the things I do in my life, but it is not the thing that I do. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a Christian, I'm a brother, I'm a son, I'm a friend, you know, like mm. business entrepreneur, like all kinds of different things I'm doing. But there's always just this layer that has been ingrained in me since I was younger to like just be a little bit like hold back a little bit. You don't want like what if people truly knew who you were and didn't like you? Mm -hmm. That would be, and what I've found, especially as how to film weddings has grown more and more and more, you know, when there are people that disagree with us or don't like us or whatever, I sit here thinking, man, I'm never going to impress everybody. Everybody's not going to always like me. And if I had just focused on being true to my soul, true to what I wanted to do to help people or whatever, I don't care about the repercussions so much. Whereas if I've been holding back, which I had been, uh, and then there's people that don't like you or talk bad about you or whatever it is, then you feel like, well, shoot, I wish I would have just been leaning into my doing what I would do anyway, because there's going to be people that don't like me. And I'm under a magnifying glass a little bit now with the tens of thousands of people out there that listen. But I guess the idea that I'm going through personally is like when I changed from Redeemed Productions' faceless brand to John Bunn Films uh, and started really leaning into, yeah, I'm a father of two. I am a Christian. I care about these kinds of love stories. I care about nostalgia. I care about home footage. I care, like, this is, if I can make anything for you, this is the video I would make for you. This is the brand I would have. This is, it. and then when people find it and say, yes, I connect with your depth as well. I want you there. There's something fulfilling about that that's, you know, fulfillment over happiness. I talked a lot. Any uh, any additions? Any thoughts? Uh, no, you didn't. I don't think you talked too much there. I think I just talked double of what you just said. But what you're saying, uh, I was kind of looking at my phone while you were talking because I was looking up something. It's this little screensaver. Hopefully, you, you can kind of see this. If you just type in, I don't know how you say his name, Maslow's, Maslow, M-A-S-L-O-W, his hierarchy of needs. And my fiance was actually showing this to me when I was in Italy, and I thought it was really interesting. And it's basically this idea of as different levels of needs are met in a human's life, the higher you get up to this this pyramid, the different things start to happen. So at the very bottom of it is psychological needs like air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing. Uh, if you don't have those things met, then that's what your mind is going to be focusing on, making sure that you have. If you don't have shelter over your head, you're going to be trying to find shelter. If you don't have food, you got to have food. If you don't, if you can't breathe well, you got to get down the mountain to where you can breathe. Like you got to make sure that these things, uh, not psychological, physiological things. Your I physiological. Gonna, I was going to fix that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, and then up uh, uh, on the next thing, once those are met, the next thing you focus on is safety needs personal security, employment, resources, resources, health, property. Um, once those things are met, like you're healthy and you have a job, uh, love and belonging is the yellow one right here. Uh, things like friendship, intimacy, family, a sense of connection. And whenever you have family and a sense of connection met, then you can focus on things or your, your mind then starts to look for esteem things. Uh, things like respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, freedom. At the very top of this hierarchy of needs is the idea of self-actualization, the desire to become the most that one can be, that once all these other things are met, then you can like really focus on being the most that that you can be. And so um, not to say in my life that I have this perfect pyramid of friendship and connection and employment and, and food and all this kind of stuff, because Lord knows I, I hit McDonald's up a lot and sleep in and maybe drink one or too many beers at night or whatever it might be. But uh, all things considered, I do know that I have this huge desire to become the most that I can be. Um, and, and, I, and I know that that hasn't always been there. Um, it kind of like in the way that you were talking about yourself, um, that this is kind of this process of this thing that is just kind of, you know, it wasn't always like that because of maybe social upbringing or what you're, what people think or whatever it might be, because what people think will sometimes 
keep us from self-actualizing, from becoming the most that we can be. Um, and I, I think back, and I don't know who I was talking to some, uh, who I was talking to. I don't know if I talked about this in the Rome retreat, but as some people know, I used to be an engineer back when I was younger in my 20s. And it was scary to quit this job to become a videographer, which I didn't even know I was going to be doing whenever I quit. It was scary to do that because I had just done four and a half years of school. My parents had just helped me out with college. I had all this student loan debt. Uh, but I wasn't about to, there was something in me, I don't know what it was, but there was something in me that was saying, I'm not about to sign my life up till I'm 65 years old to be doing this boring, mundane crap that personally for me, it wasn't for me. I just so boring for who I am as Cody Stanton Giles. And, uh, you know, I remember when I finally quit and I can skip all the reasons why and stuff, but I finally quit and it was scary. And I was driving away in my truck from the engineering firm. And I looked in the rear view mirror and I could see it in the background, all the people's trucks and all the people's, you know, cars parked out in front. I could see the logo. And it was the last time I was ever driving away from that place. And it was like, a, it was a manifestation of this idea of leaving something behind and what I felt like I was leaving. I'll never forget driving away from there. And I felt this sense of being okay. The sense of, oh, wait, the world is not on fire. I am okay because I did decide to do this and not to overuse this word, but this audacious move to make, to take this bold risk. At the time I was quitting and moving to an orphanage in Honduras. I was not moving in this direction. Um, and just to see what's come from this idea of becoming, wanting to do the most that I could to find to have a fulfilling life, one that I could look up back on with no regret that was fulfilling with my, lo- my walk spiritually, but also emotionally. And that I'm taking care of my friends and my family. That was the beginning of it. And, you know, as you know, connection and esteem, like these things on this pyramid talking about how I built respect for myself and self-esteem. And I have recognition now in like the industry, maybe, or whatever, however, you know, small I might think it is, uh, you know, on top of that is this next desire to self-actualize, to, to become the best that I can be. And I think that whenever you focus on becoming the best that you can be, you start to for, forget and, and put aside the thoughts of those around you and what they will think. Because mm-hmm. what you have to do is you have to make that YouTube video about your engagement video because, you know, even if you don't like how you look on camera or it's really vulnerable that I'm, you know, posting and I'm saying this because it's something I'm preparing to do is to make my proposal video of when I proposed to Lisa. It was very vulnerable and and to, uh, to post that, thinking back <clears throat> to a few years ago, I, I was so scared to even post my face on YouTube and to see where, like, you know, the more strong that my desire has become to be the, the most true version of myself to help others out so that, you know, I have real purpose and fulfillment in this life, the more apt I am to do those things. Um, and so how does this apply to wedding videography? Well, it applies to wedding videography because if you're listening, then you're a person like us and you're not defined as a wedding videographer. You are so mm-hmm. much more than that, as John said. You're, you might be a father or a mother um, or a husband or a wife or a brother or a member of a church or a member of a basketball league or doing some big project that's for a job that you still have, or you might be working for some humanitarian thing, whatever it might be. Uh, even if I didn't say it, like you are so much more than just a, a wedding videographer. And uh, to remind you of that, that, that like for you, like this is just a part of your journey. This is hopefully you may be able to do it till you're 65, but most of us won't. Um, or at least maybe I think they won't just because wedding videographers were new. Maybe there'll be like a bunch of old wedding videographers, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like a, it's a new industry, you know, we haven't been doing it for too long. Uh, but you know, you're not just a wedding videographer. Boomer says that all the time. We should do a little tally of how many times I bring Boomer up in this. Uh, but no, he's like one of my best friends. So, uh, yeah, it, it, we're so much more than that. And just, I just want to, if you guys take anything away from that to remember that, you know, don't freak out too much about what people think about you in the industry or anything. Be your, be your true self in the industry. And out of the uh, overflow of that will be more impact on people, more fulfillment in you leading mm-hmm. to hopefully more happiness and uh, realization that this is a step in your journey and that there's so much more ahead and in the now, because you're not so f- hyper-focused on this one thing that if you don't succeed and do this thing perfectly in the way that everybody thinks that you should, that you're not going to be happy. No, mm-hmm. c- because happiness isn't the goal, as we talked about. Yeah, <laughs> man, I resonate with so much of this. And I think about the little pieces that I feel like God has orchestrated in my life over the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years to get me to the point to where I'm at now. And just thinking through... Uh, how I tried so hard 
to regulate all the time. And this is something that I think I was talking to you about before we hit record, but I was in a counseling session at my church uh, and uh, sitting there and the counselor said, um, how often do you get really angry? And I was like, never. I don't get angry ever. Like I get hurt sometimes, but angry. She was like, when was the last time you felt like throwing something through the wall? And I was like, never. I don't know. Maybe I was like 12, 13. I don't know. And it's like, okay. And it's like, how, how long has it been since you have experienced giddy joy where you are so excited that you're jumping up and down and you're, and I was like, whew. It's like, that's been a long time too. Uh, and she was like, those are both sides of the spectrum. And what you do, you know, the, if 10 equals extreme joy and zero equals extreme anger, you stay between five, six, five and six. You, <laughs> yeah. you're, there's a safety mechanism in you trying to protect you from feeling extreme sadness or extreme anger or extreme happiness or whatever because of something, you know, in your past or whatever. And as we dig further in, into the history of me, it's just like, oh, okay. I've learned a lot of things about myself, but it's like, I was taught uh, that we don't live by how we feel. And like, that's a, a Bible verse that can be taken out of context. Uh, so I was kind of taught, like, we don't feel. Like, you're if you are flying off the handle, if you are just going crazy. Like you are being led by how you feel and that is wrong. And that was just like a, a thing that I realized, oh my goodness, for 20 years, I haven't been, I haven't been really feeling life. I haven't, and I start excavating and digging. And it's like, I just try to trying to stay safe and regulated all the time. Regulators, you know, yeah. like that song came to my mind, but uh, you know, just like <laughs> staying regulated all the time. And I do that with how to film weddings. I don't want to make anybody mad. I don't want to make anybody sad. I don't want to make, and like the people are like the most, the, the, the best part of how to film weddings is whenever you guys are just vulnerable and you're just like, whenever my dad passed, I couldn't like, that was one of the first times I felt extreme sadness in such a long time. And I recorded an episode just about what it meant to go through that. And people are like, that's my favorite episode you guys have ever done, like, or whatever. Yeah. Or, that's what resonated with me. And it just, I'm realizing that I am not only stealing from myself, extreme joy, extreme emotion in a, but like, I am not fulfilling. Like I, there are people on the other side of that to whenever I really lean into what is it that makes me feel? What is it that makes me, me, how can I connect on a deep, spiritual level in my soul with who I feel like I'm put on this earth to be. The more that I lean into that and I'm around people like you or Boomer or whatever and can see other people doing it, the more I'm realizing, oh my goodness, the <clears throat> impact is really there. And I don't care yeah. if somebody doesn't like me because I'm being truly me. At least they don't like me for me being truly me <coughs> instead of me being <clears throat> safe version <clears throat> of me. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> this is cool. I, I enjoy, hopefully if you guys are listening and I'm saying this to John now too, but hopefully, you know, I was telling him before we started this podcast recording that my favorite podcast, I don't listen to a lot uh, of podcasts, uh, but when I do, it's from the people that I look up to. Um, it's like, you know, whoever, whoever it might be like, Oh, I heard so-and-so is going to be on this podcast and I'll listen to it. And it turns out the stuff that I enjoy listening to the most from them is just them just talking about their life and what they're going through. Um, that's kind of what I feel like it's been with me and John today. And uh, this year has been a big year of growth for us. And uh, it's been a big year for me at the talk about that pyramid again of self-actualizing more than I ever have before to where maybe I was further down uh, on that pyramid, you know, trying to, to figure out other needs that I need to be met before I could do that. But this has been a big year for me of doing that, of of trying to motivate others, seeing the value and the fulfillment in, in being there for others and seeing how me being there for others has motivated them to go and do their own stuff, uh, whether it's with wedding videography uh, or with other things in life. But that's through a process of me uh, or being, being honest to who I am. Uh, and hopefully that can be an encouragement to you guys if you're driving, listening to this or sitting here watching it on YouTube or uh, have it playing in the background as you're pulling selects that, you know, you know, me and John are, are guys just like you or, or people just like everybody out there, like, you know, at, during Calibrate, during the Rome workshop, like I gave out my phone number to, to people as just like a, 
you know, please text me if you got questions or, or, you know, this resonated with you, or if you just want to talk to somebody and you're feeling similar things. And like, I want to do that too here. You know, if you guys do have anything that, you know, you're feeling that, you know, have more questions about that me and John are talking about wedding videography related or not just like life related, like, please text me. Like my phone number is 731-225-6534. And love talking to people, love connecting. And I've more motivated to do that, the more that uh, I see the the benefit uh, and the fulfillment that I have and like talking with others and connecting and just creating Mm -hmm. more community. So um, it sounds like I'm ending the episode. uh, Yeah, I know. Thanks for having me on today, Stan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I did. I wanted to say, I know that like, as this episode has been released, your course is coming out Mm. tomorrow. I think so. Tuesday. Um, yeah, October r- 3rd, whenever that is. Yeah, <laughs> so this this episode, I believe, is coming out on the 2nd. Um, and so <clears throat> I, I just wanted to give you a second. <laughs> second, okay. Second. Uh, fun. And just, just to kind of let people out there know, a lot of people know what it is, but because uh, whenever you were thinking about putting a course together, I think this time last year maybe, we were talking and you were saying, hey, I'm thinking about making a, a full-on wedding videography course with how to, I was, I encouraged you, uh, you know, I was like, Hey, we have the complete wedding videography course, which is like a full how to film weddings kind of course. I think that the industry would benefit more if you really leaned into what it is that you're doing and what you've done. And like, it doesn't make sense for Films by Stanton, who runs the Destination and Elopements, you know, wedding videographers group to put out just kind of a general wedding videography course. It makes more sense for you to dig in and like teach how to become, you know, a travel wedding filmmaker. So why don't you take a second to why why the course? Uh, What is it? Um, That kind of thing. Well, like speaking in what you said, I'm very glad you did because it not to beat a dead horse here, it did allow me to lean more into myself and do what was actually more true to me because that is much more true to me uh, doing, doing that kind of stuff. Uh, but so yeah, like the, the course is called Rome, uh, this nice short and sweet, easy to remember. Um, just kind of like this idea of roaming through the world, enjoying it, getting to see different places through this art of wedding videography. Um, that, you know, in my own lane, I, I tried to do my best at, and a lot of people have grown to like my style. And so that's why the course is there. Um, you know, within a couple of years of being a wedding videographer, I had, you know, become a full-time travel wedding videographer, meaning all I'd shot was destination weddings for myself, traveling to go somewhere, or it was an actual destination wedding or elopements. Uh, and so teaching people how to fast track that, um, was a big part of it um, and how to rebrand your businesses to accommodate that when a wedding leads do come through in this day where it's very popular for people to travel and have their wedding somewhere that whenever they, you know, they come across your website, they, they strike when the iron's hot, they see your branding, they say, yes, yes, yes. They, it's an irresistible yes, as you said during the Rome retreat as the name of your name of your uh, presentation. But on top of that, so like if you're interested in travel weddings, Rome is there, <clears throat> but uh if you like my style too, I teach like full modules on color, editing, my business, uh, how I shoot, all those kinds of things that, you know, I would advise buying the course if you are wanting to get into travel weddings. But if you are, you know, wanting to emulate my style too, uh, it'll definitely help a lot with the editing and shooting, how I actually shoot, the gear I use, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of that stuff is on, out there uh, for free on YouTube, but this is a very consolidated, um, very in-depth, uh, over 30 hours of content uh, you know, course for mm-hmm. you guys with mo- lots of different modules. Again, I'm never here to pressure anybody to do anything. If it's right for you, um, feel free to do it. But this time I am, uh, this will be the last time I include, I include the workshop for free year after year for those of you that, um, do decide to join, because if I keep doing it out here after year of launching Rome, it's going to turn into this massive thing. And I don't always want it to be like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so limiting that to being, this will be like, you know, the founding members kind of a thing. 2023 was the first year I did Rome. Those that joined that year, they have lifetime access to come out to the workshop, whether it's in Denver or we move it somewhere else, who knows, but that'll always be included with Rome for you if you join. So, um, yeah, if you got any questions, just text me at my phone number. Um, but regardless of that, uh, just pleased to be on here. Thanks for always having me on, John. It's a, it's always good to get real and to just have real non-curated conversations. Like we said, we didn't have any notes coming in here. Mm-mm. We're just two friends talking and 
talking about what we're doing in life, how we're trying, and hopefully you guys listening can be motivated by that. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, and if you head over to Stanton's website, Films by Stanton, uh, you'll be able to find a link over there. We'll put it in the show, show notes as well just to, to check out the course. But it's filmsbystanton.com slash Um And <coughs> I, I really do encourage you if you're, you know, you mentioned it, but it's like if you do want to get into this world of like destinations and elopements and travel and different things like that, I couldn't think of a better place to like have all of that information right there, ready to go, uh, you know, concentrated, if you will. And it's just right there. I've watched Stanton pour, uh, just like he did to his retreat, uh, just everything, his whole being into this where he had to actually take a couple months to recoup after creating it because it was just facts. And that's a, that's another story for a different day, but just like he gave it, his all it's it's really well produced it looks really beautiful it sounds great everything about it's awesome but like the content itself and then the built-in community aspect of it, it you know if this is something you're interested in be sure to check it out um stanton Thanks, seriously thank you for taking the time for being a friend for continually pushing me i'm excited uh to say the least to be your friend moving forward in life and can't wait to see where things go i'm so excited that you're getting married <laughs> soon and that a lot of good things happening in your world, and I wish you nothing but the best. So thank you so much, Stan, for taking the time to be on the HTFW podcast today. Uh, John, don't take over my podcast. This is my podcast. We're going to go ahead and close this out. John Bunn, thank you. Nick Miller's beard, we thank you as well. Thank you for being here. Good night. Good night. Stanton, again, thank you so much for being on the podcast this week. It's so good to be your friend. It's so good to go deep and push each other to be better. I hope that you're out there listening, feeling motivated to really lean into your true self, to really uh, be unashamed in who you are and where you're heading in life. And hopefully that uh, you know comes through on the screen with your edits, with your branding on your website or your Instagram posts or whatever. But the more that you can lean into the unique version of you that you are, the more you're going to have that fulfillment when you book those clients that also connect with that. So Stanton, uh, you know, as a reminder, if, if you're wanting to check out Rome, check out filmsbystanton.com slash Rome. And then also, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, if you are needing outsourcing, be sure to check out howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing. I know these uh, companies and we vetted them all and they're going to start filling up soon. And I know that you're going to maybe get yourself in a pinch if you don't reach out now. So now's the time to reach out. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing. If you have questions about anything we talked about today, um, if you just want to say hello, shoot us a DM on Instagram at how to film weddings. We've got a lot of really good episodes coming up. So be sure to stay tuned, stay connected in our communities. And until next time, we'll see ya. Attention wedding filmmakers. The best resource for licensing music for your wedding films is Musicbed. I have been exclusively using Musicbed for about eight years and our films are better because of it. I hear a lot from our couples that reach out to us that our wedding films feel different, that the music isn't cheesy. Musicbed has a roster of incredibly talented musicians, bands, and composers who pour their hearts into their work and you can hear the difference. Find the perfect song with Musicbed's intuitive search features like genre, mood, beats per minute, and my favorite, key. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed to learn more and take your films to the next level. Use promo code HTFW23 at checkout to receive one month free with the purchase of an annual subscription. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed.